Good morning. I welcome you all to our service this morning as we gather together in God's presence. And today we celebrate the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today, August the 15th, is her actual date in the calendar. And as part of our celebration of the lives of the saints through August, uh, we'll be spending time uh, looking at this remarkable young woman, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, just a, a couple of words of, of announcements. Uh, first of all, just a reminder, and everyone seems to be doing a, a wonderful job of it, just remember to call in if you're planning to attend in person. And as our numbers get closer to our capacity, it becomes more important. So just make sure you do that sometime during the week. And uh, also want to note, of course, celebrations. And celebrations this week. Wish happy birthday to Dorothy LaPierre, Kathy Morton, and Jennifer Barnes. And a happy anniversary to Dwayne and Joanne Dudgeon and Rob and Vicki Wright. So wish you all the best as you celebrate your special day in the coming week. Uh, lovely to have Jan Jensen playing the cello with us today and a wonderful start to our worship in the prelude for this morning. As we continue, well, I better ask, I should ask this, is, are there any other announcements I should make? then I invite you to stand for the opening greeting and the gathering of the community. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. We'll join in the canticle, the Song of Mary, and we'll say it responsively by the half verse. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. He has mercy on those who fear him. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. The promise he made to our fathers. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And please join me in the collect for today. 
O God, you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your incarnate Son. May we who have been redeemed by his blood share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now, now and forever. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from Isaiah. Later, the Lord sent this message to King Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign of confirmation, Ahaz. Make it as difficult as you want, as high as heaven or as deep as the place of the dead. But the king refused. No, he said, I will not test the Lord like that. Then Isaiah said, Listen well, you royal family of David. Isn't it enough to exhaust human patience? Must you exhaust the patience of my God as well? All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. By the time this child is old enough to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he will be eating yogurt and honey. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Galatians. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law, so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thank you, God. Following the second reading, you'll find the response read for today. I invite you to join in the response, which is the darker colored print. My life is in your hand, deliver me. Shine on your servant with the light of your love. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle, to keep me safe. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the Gospel proclamation. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful for he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. The Gospel of Christ. Lord, uphold me that I might uplift thee in the name of the God of love, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, here we are in the middle of summer, just following a fairly warm streak of weather, and we are immediately today sent back to Advent and Christmas with the birth of our Lord Jesus as we look at the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And more often than not, that's where we find her and hear about her, is a part of the whole nativity narrative that we hear through the end of Advent and into the beginning of Christmas and Epiphany. But I think it's great that we have an opportunity outside of, of kind of those images of Christmas and that time of year to really spend some time thinking about this young woman that God chose to be the, the mother of his son. And uh, I've, I've often talked about the Blessed Virgin. She's held in such regard in terms of her life and her example that most, uh, most saints get one day in the church's calendar for us to remember them. Uh, Peter and Paul are a bit of an exception. They get one and a half days, and because uh, they share a day, that's how you get one and a half. And, and of course, Mary, though, Mary throughout the church's calendar gets five days that are 
are devoted to remember her and, and what was special about her in her life and in her ministry. And today we remember her as on her own particular day, August the 15th. And as I often do for these saints' days, I'm going to begin my words by sharing what is said about her in the book, The Lives of the Saints, which is the clergy go-to uh, encyclopedia of saints' lives. And uh, I don't know any priest that doesn't actually have a copy, Father George. I think most, most of us do. And it's a wonderful place just to go to capture a, 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 a brief vision of who the saint is and what was special about them in their lives and why we remember them in the church. And so I'm going to share these words about St. Mary the Virgin. Mary is honored because she was the mother of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and because the Gospels testify that she was a virgin when she conceived and gave him birth. Their witness to such a wonder has generated much of the devotion that is paid to her. But it's not the only reason. For the evangelists also portray her as the archetype of all the people of God and the person who leads their praises of the Almighty. In Luke's account of the Annunciation, Mary was perplexed by the meaning of the God's words to her and yet chose to accept the wondrous service which it ordained her to accomplish. At the birth of her son, Mary continued to be puzzled whenever she met with a further sign of his divine origin or with hints of what he was, was meant to do or be. But she was always patient in her puzzlement. In Luke's words, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The fruit of her pondering may be reflected in the fact that all the evangelists say that she followed her son from Galilee to Jerusalem and stood with the small company of women who witnessed his crucifixion. The book of Acts adds that after the resurrection she shared in the disciples' community of prayer and watched with them for the coming of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. So Mary... This remarkable young woman who was called by God into a remarkable relationship. And, and you know, we look at, at a calling, and, and of course Mary's call into a relationship with God was quite a spectacular one, you have to admit. Um, sending an angel along to deliver messages is, is pretty high-end in terms of people's calling. And uh, I've often wanted to see an angel, but have not yet got there. And uh, other than my dear wife, of course, I have to say that. And uh, got to score my points wherever I can. And, uh, but, but regardless of whether it was that kind of an experience, all of us have been called into relationship by God. If it were not so, we would be out on our boat or down by the lake or doing something other than being here in this church on a hot August 15th celebrating our faith together. We are all called by God into relationship. Some of those calls are, are, are spectacular. Mountaintop experience, uh, transfiguration moments for us. And for others, it's just the quiet, nurturing presence of God that carries us through parents and godparents in, into our lives as we just further that and deepen that relationship as we grow. No matter how you come at it, we have been called by God into a special relationship through His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, and the response to that call is partly witnessed in being here today in worship. But the thing I love in the write-up about Mary is that they talk about her being an archetype of what it means to be a person of God. Certainly she was called into relationship. She'd already had a relationship with God. She clearly was somebody who was a worshipping member of her community. <coughs> Excuse me. That she knew who God was in her life because she knew how to respond when she heard God's call through Gabriel. So she already had that relationship. But, but it's not just about the relationship. It's about the response to that in our lives. Mary responded fully and completely. 
She didn't just give birth to Jesus. She walked with him and journeyed with him and supported him all through his ministry and earthly life. And, and they only touch on a, on a few places where, where she is, is seen in that story. But, you know, we remember the visit of the wise men and the last gift being myrrh. And uh, Mary treasuring all those, as St. Luke says, treasuring them in her heart. Um, we remember the trip to uh, the temple as Jesus is taken in for the presentation and they meet Simeon for the first time. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. And then he carries on, you know, this child will be the, 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 for the rising and the falling of many. And your heart will be pierced also. And, and again, she goes away. You know, what does, that, what does that mean? What does that mean? And she continues the journey. Of course, we love the story. At the age of 12, he took off to the temple and forgot to head home with the gang. And so they spend two days on the road and realize he's not with them and go back. You know, what, why didn't you come with us? Why, why are you here? Well, I must be about my father's business. And, and all through the first uh, miracle, wedding feast at Cana. You know, they've run out of wine. Well, you know, Mom, what's that got to do with me? And she knew how he would respond. Calling the servants, just do whatever he says. It'll be fine. 180 gallons later, we have the best wine that they had served at the wedding at the end. And then finally, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother, as he speaks one last time to his mother from the cross. So Mary devoted herself to the service that she was called to in giving, not just giving birth to, but loving, supporting, and journeying with Jesus throughout his life. And, and like her, we are called into relationship, but that is also a call to service and ministry. Uh, they go hand in hand. It's a bit like somebody saying, it's fine to say you love somebody, but you also have to show it. Well, it's the same with, with our call to relationship with God, with Jesus. That we have to demonstrate it in our lives. Mary, Mary is maybe the, the, the most tremendous example of how she turned over her life to the service of God. But every one of us is called into service. There are no spectators in the bleachers in Christian ministry. We're all down on the field supporting, encouraging one another in faith and in ministry. And, and Mary reminds us that, and, it, and we all have gifts that we can use. Some may be for prayer and meditation. Others may be to, to be the welcomer like Shirley was at the back door today, welcoming people in and guiding them into our church in these still uncertain and strange days. Um, people who have the gift of proclamation coming up and, and proclaiming the word of God to the community gathered and to the community scattered today. That we all have gifts to share, but we're all called to share them in service of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mary did that. The other way Mary responded was in worship, in praise. And, and they note that in here that, you know, in... in uh, we hear that wonderful Magnificat, and I must say that I still, of, of, of the things I yearn for in the old Book of Common Prayer, Evensong is probably the one I yearn for most. And I used to love seven o'clock every Sunday going and singing those wonderful canticles of Evensong, which included, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, the Song of Simeon, and the Magnificat, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Mary responds to God's call in praise and worship. And like her, we come together here to celebrate our faith in praise and worship of our God in rather an unusual way still presently. But our hearts are filled with the presence of the living God through his word proclaimed. And now, and we missed it so long, for so much for so long, able to participate in the Eucharist together. We experience it in the fellowship of believers as well, that we offer up our prayers and praises and we are filled by God's presence and Holy Spirit to continue the service to which we are called. And we come in today and we celebrate somebody who gives us the, 
epitome of the example of what it means to be called into relationship by God and responding to that in service and in worship. And as we celebrate Mary today, let us celebrate the same call that we share with her, a call to relationship, to service, and to praise. Amen. Would you please stand and join me in the affirmation of faith? Together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us from power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Rod's going to come forward and lead us in our prayers. Stand, sit, or kneel, whichever you're most comfortable with. This morning as we gather, we offer up in our cyclical prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of South, Southern Africa. Within the Anglican Lutheran cycle of prayer, we pray for the right Reverend Jeff Woodcroft, Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Rupert's Land. In the Lutheran Church, we pray for the Dean, Council, and congregations of the West Central area of the Synod of Alberta and the territories. Within our own diocese, we pray for Bishop Michael and Sophie. We pray also for St. Alban Stella and the Reverend Canon Don Bailey. Within our own community, we pray for our congregations of St. John's and St. Lawrence and for our specially shared ministry. In our community, we pray for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Pastor Edgar Nunes. We also pray for our friends at St. Paul's, Canon Lynn Dillabaugh and Reverend Ted Guthrie. We pray also for the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and Pastor Moses Prashad and Christ United Church in Lynn. Today within our own parish, we offer up our prayers for Gary and Sharon Spicer, Will Stacy, Barbara Stopa, Rick and Karen Swift. We pray also for our clergy, Michael and George, our staff and our wardens, and all who minister here. We continue to pray for peace in all countries of our world. We pray for those responsible for distributing and giving the vaccines for COVID-19 that our world might begin to recover from the pandemic. We pray for our troops serving in the many parts of our world and members of our own regiment, the Brockville Rifles, particularly for those who are presently deployed. We pray for all people living in areas of conflict and for all refugees fleeing to safer countries. We pray for our planet and that we might all be faithful stewards of this earth. Now please join me in the litany with the response, Holy One, hear and have mercy. God of Israel, may this day be one of fulfillment and peace. Holy One. Fill the world with your peace and justice. Help us in our efforts of reconciliation. Help us to be more aware and respectful of all nations. Give us the insight to be one nation unto God. Teach us to love others as you have loved us. Help us to address the many areas of needs of your people. Help us to nourish the hungry, heal the sick, protect the frightened, reassure the worried, and comfort the lonely. Also remembering, especially those affected by the earthquake in Haiti, strengthen and relieve all those who are in need. 
Renew the church through the power of your life-giving spirit. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As we continue in prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us all stand, and, and although we can't uh, share hands together, we can share eyes together and nods of heads and smiles under masks as we pass the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. to just stand, sit, or kneel for the Eucharistic prayer as we continue in worship together. And let's join first in the prayer over the gifts. God of mercy, receive all we offer you this day. May we share with the Virgin Mary the joys of your eternal kingdom and live with you in unending love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to thank you and praise you, 
holy and gracious God, creator of all things, ruler of heaven and earth, sustainer of life, for you are the source of all goodness, rich in mercy and abounding in love. You are faithful to your people in every generation, and your word endures forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the fellowship of your saints and the company of heaven, we glorify your name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the We praise you, merciful Father, not as we ought, but as we are able. Because in sending, in, in your tender love, you gave the world your only Son, in an order that the world might be saved through him. He made you known by taking the form of a servant, healing the sick, liberating the oppressed, reaching out to the lost. Betrayed, reviled, and nailed to the cross, he confronted the power of sin and disarmed it forever. In his offering of himself, he became the perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Redeemed by Christ, we have been adopted as your children. By your pardon, you have made us worthy to praise you. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. In obedience to him and with grateful hearts, we approach your holy table, remembering our Savior's sacrifice and rejoicing in his victory. Confident in his sovereign purpose, we declare our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit on us that we, as we receive this bread and this cup, we may partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. May we be renewed in his risen life, filled with love, and strengthened in our will to serve others. And make our lives, we pray, a pure and holy sacrifice acceptable to you, knitting us together as one in your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. O Lamb of God, that 
that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Just a reminder, we'll receive communion at the uh, chancel step. I do ask that you all come down the middle aisle and then make your way back to your seats around the outer aisles on your way following receiving the Eucharist.
Would you please stand for the concluding prayers? Together let us pray. God of grace, today we raise our voices to magnify your holy name and in our own generation to call her blessed who became the mother of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we who have shared this holy food continue with her in your glorious kingdom, founded and established in Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask this in his name. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of the God of love, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer be upon you and remain with you and those you love from this time forth and always. Amen. Let us go forth as ambassadors of God's reconciling love.